Welcome, everybody, to Face the Facts. It's good to have you all here once again. My name is Nick Face. We hope everybody's having a great beginnings to fall and is really into all these sports teams having so many things going on right now between the Patriots, the Celtics, the Bruins, and even baseball with the postseason going on. We're going to break down all those things here today on this program. And I am lucky and fortunate enough to have our good friend Phil Healy from NorCam Studios, the program coordinator over there. Phil, how you doing? Uh, Nick, I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm not being held hostage. I'm just you are letting not. you know I'm, okay. I'm not. I have to say that legally obligated to say I'm not being held hostage. Excellent. And I know that sounds like something someone who's being held hostage would say, but definitely not happening. Uh, no, it's uh, great to be here. And thank you, Nick, for making the time. And yeah, I, I'm looking forward to talking about whatever comes up. So I know Celtics. near and near and dear to your heart, I think we should start with opening night here for the Boston Celtics for a team that had a lot of commotion to start before the season began, uh, began their their 2022-2023 season at the Garden last night, and they pulled off a tremendous victory against the Philadelphia 76ers led by James Harden, uh, Joel Embiid, and crew. So just a couple of takeaways that you had from the game, Phil, your overall reactions, and where this team's going to be heading as the season kicks off. Well, I, I will say this. If if Harden plays like that every night, they're, Philly's going to be a tough team. But he mm-hmm. fell off in the second half. He had like 22 in the first half. Yep. Uh, but also, you know, Philadelphia is going to be Philadelphia. Embiid is going to be good, but also disengage if he's not really feeling it, if he's getting pushed around a little bit, or if things aren't really defensively like meshing for him. It was a high-scoring game. I think it was like 127 or like 126 or like 117 or something. Yep, yep, that's exactly right. And uh, yeah, no, I listen, if the two Jays play, if Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum play that way, they play defense as a team and you have, I mean, Grant Williams was five for five. That was kind of nuts. Uh, that that won't happen every night, but he would love that in the finals last year, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, he's getting better as a, um, as an offensive player, but he also like, like he said, he got interviewed last night by Abby, uh, Abby Chin. And he's like, yeah, I rebound. And that's like, honestly, that's, when the team doesn't rebound, anything in the NBA, you don't get the ball. You don't have a shot at it. So, I mean, I think their rebounding was better. Their defense could get a little better. I, th- I think it was pretty good. But I, if anything, last night just shows you, hey, that's Philly. And Philly is not necessarily in the tops of being like, maybe maybe they're a top five team in the East. And that's insane. Because you have, I guess maybe they're the top, the fourth. But, I mean, you have maybe, you have the C's, you have, uh, Brooklyn, you have uh, Milwaukee, you have Miami, you have uh, and you have Philadelphia, and uh, honestly, man, you like those are five really good teams in the East. They could easily be like the you know you you could t- they could easily take the first seed, and who knows who knows. So my question that I keep thinking about as the season began last night is, do the Celtics have something to prove this year? I, I think little, something, more, what I mean by that is, do they have something more to prove than they did last season? Yeah, I think they want to win it. I think they want to prove that they're not a one trick pony and that last year wasn't kind of fluky, even though, honestly, you need a little bit of flukiness to get in there because not every the best team isn't necessarily always going to get to the finals and or win it. Nope. Uh, you need luck. And they, you know, as you said, your opening remarks about it, it's been the preseason like leading up to this 20, uh, 22, 2023 20, season was riddled with turmoil because Gallinari goes down and yep. like a, a playing for team Italy. Uh, you have Rob Williams finally kind of uh, conceding to his knee problem. And you have the, the biggest, craziest thing you have Ume Odelka uh, getting suspended, suspended for the season. Yeah. And probably fired or probably let go at one point. Who knows? But Listen, they came out swinging, and I I think they'll be okay as long as like they're two top players and even and smart. Those guys, as long as everyone has the mentality, like not that they have to. Well, yeah, prove something. Sure, they want to win it. They so want just to, to catch it. everybody up to speed in case people live under a rock and don't know what the heck has gone on with the Celtics and everything. Yeah, I'm Doka is suspended for the season, and much like to your point, Phil, and we haven't really talked about what our overall reaction and everything to the situation is, is is it still an ongoing investigation and trying to figure out more to the story on what happened with 
in my personal opinion, an abuse of power. Yeah. Somebody that was in a position that used his authority to get what he wanted with other people on the Celtic staff, female people. And that is uh, that is disgusting and wrong. So I do applaud the Celtics for taking the stance the way they have. This wasn't an NBA thing. Let's just be clear here. The NBA didn't come down and say the Celtics had to suspend and do rightful uh, rightful to do right by the situation with Udoka. The Celtics stepped in and said, this is unacceptable. This is against our policy. We are 100% taking care of this and making sure this never happens again. So assistant coach who from last year, Joe, um, is it Mazzullo? Is that how you say it? I believe, I believe it's uh Missoula. Uh, oh no, Missoula. I think you're right. I think Missoula. I think you're right. I think Missoula, Missoula. Missoula steps in. He's now the youngest coach in the NBA. So that's something that sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. I think it helps because the players already know who their coach is. I don't, I don't foresee a lot of philosophical changes with new approaches on everything. I think this was driven more so by the players on who they felt they wanted. I don't think they wanted somebody else coming in who was a nobody that would come in and kind of change the system per se. So I think the systems of, you know, the defensive front, the offensive side of the ball and everything, they are going to keep things as consistent as they can to make a situation that was a hundred percent a negative into more of a positive situation. So I'm happy with, what they've done to rectify the situation and get to hopefully a place where we can call them champions. Because at the end of the day, at least in my eyes, it's not up or shut up time. Yeah. So when, no, and, with, with my oh, approach oh, kind of was saying it's something to prove. Yeah. They do got to prove something specifically Tatum and Brown. You need to show this as a, this is a NBA championship style team. Yeah. I, and to, echo your further echo your point yeah it was it was kind of nice to see a team do that and and i know i'm in i miss this atmosphere that we're in for the past like you know a handful of years i mean that's kind of a, you can say it's a no-brainer of sorts but no they could have right they could have skirted by it who knows how long they try to keep it under wraps but you know what it um you know they took care of it and uh missoula uh, missoula i think i apologize missoula we're gonna call joe missoula yes that joe is Mizzoula. correct and he's yep. been with the organization for four years so he was there yep. under um brad stevens and he was there under udoka so i mean i think like you said i think it's 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 important i think the players kind of wanted to keep it in-house and i think it'll be a good repre representation of you know that organization and yeah who knows how how much who knows how much a coach has over a team? I mean, again, especially in the NBA, but you know what? The good ones will find a way. So, Hey, yeah, they got to find the way. That's they it. hundred percent. You got yeah, so far last season and you collapsed in the finals. I mean, you could have very, very well easily had a great opportunity at getting that banner 18. Um, I thought they thing, had it, Nick. I thought they I, had it. I did too. After game we three, were up, I was thought it two were, one. We were, we're up, up two one. one, one yeah. Two one with, uh, you know, two more games at the garden. And I thought they would make it in five or six, but yep. And then it just collapsed. It collapsed, just like the cookie. What, what did Mayor Menino just to say? The cookie, the cookie crumbles. It crumbled yeah. all over the place right there. On um, the other thing that I thought was a very nice touch and very classy touch last night for opening night was the tribute they did to Bill Russell. As many of you know, Bill Russell passed away um, a couple months back. And this season will be honored by uh, to him. They have a special commemorative patch that's part of their new jerseys. By the way, do you like the new jerseys that they showcased last night? The dark green, black. I don't know if you noticed it. Sorry, sorry. No, I love them. I uh, those jerseys are amazing. They're a, a '60s throwback, and yep. I'm sure they'll make them available. Because I mean, you got shoe heads, and you have like a very um, Clo uh, clothes uh, uh, oriented culture mm -hmm. actually with all like not just basketball like football like you show me someone or hell tom is tom there tell him they made another hat yeah no exactly but, right <laughs> no but it's just and actually you probably it is a cool hat tom you probably would like it i would like it but no those are i think that's fantastic that do that throwback especially for um, 
one of the greatest champions this city or, or, or any sport has ever known. So my only knock on them is they look kind of similar to the Milwaukee Bucks with their colors and everything. So that's the oh, I can see on. that. Yeah. So just for an identity piece, you know, you always yeah. had that dark, not the dark, the lighter green with the white and everything. That's the classic Celtic style jersey and everything in colors. So this it's it's going to take a while for me to get used to something. I hate change. So <laughs> if people like this, it, I guess it's OK. But is this something I thought that was for like a special night or are they going? No, just... I, th I think these are going to be showcased quite a bit. So okay, yeah, I'm. All, I mean, they do that a lot now in the. You know, they do NBA. And, I mean, look at the Patriots the from last yeah. week. Uh, was it not last week? The no, week the prior, week before. Yeah, the Lions the are going opener, back to those classic red and whites with the old Pat Patriot logo. Yeah. I like that. That was. I like cool. it too. I and they need great. to do that more often, in in my eyes and everything. I like uh, the Brady or not Brady. I'm sorry, the um the Bledsoe era. Um, oh, the like, lighter blue, the lighter blue with the weird like Patriot guy that was like almost a ret you know, like, um, yep. almost Air Force -esque, esque type of like Patriot guy. Yep. Uh, but that's also a weird kind of one, too. But that one when they rebranded themselves, uh, you probably okay. were too young for that. I, I no, don't no, 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 no. I'm not young in the least bit. I'm I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> so I remember oh, those. Enough. I even remember the 96, 97 Super Bowl against Green Bay. Oh, of course. I watching that. I Desmond six Howard. years old. Yeah, oh, there years you go. Old. Oh, yeah, I even remember that. Yep. I know you're not the biggest hockey fan, Phil, but I'll I'll join in. I know this would be kind of where Tom's <laughs> Tom's uh, part would come in, but I am very amped on this uh, this season for the Bruins right now, and it's leading me to believe that this team is going to be in contention, and they better they better damn well be for a Stanley Cup with all the players that they have assembled on this team. I don't know really? if you've watched anything recently. They had a bad loss last night. They lost 7-5 to five against yeah. Ottawa. But overall, this team right now is down Brad Marchand. They are down Charlie McAvoy. And they are down Matt Grizzlick on the defensive end for everything. And they have a lot of depth on this team this season, which is great. You have the return of David Krejci, which is a massive win for the team. That second line with Krejci, Hall, and Pasta should go down as one of the best second lines in hockey this season. And if it's not, there's a problem. The first line is getting a resurgence from Jake DeBrusque right now. He is paired off with Patrice Bergeron, and they look tremendous. We have a new addition from Pavel Zaka, who's added some nice speed and tenacity out on the ice, which I'm very pleased with. Third line is anchored by Charlie Coyle. It also has Craig Smith, who's been a, a great addition to the, the team that I must say. And then you've got some guys that are really hungry, trying to fight for more ice time with the mix of the fourth and the and even on the third line and everything too. So your depth that you're getting is, is awesome. I really like what I've seen so far from another new addition in AJ Greer. He's, I think he's got two or three goals so far in the early beginnings of this season. My biggest question here on this team is can they survive in the month without two of the mainstays on defense? Can they also survive a couple more weeks without Martian? Because the defense right now scares me still a little bit. They need McAvoy very badly. They also are without Brandon Carlo on an injury again. He did not play in the Ottawa game. You could definitely feel their losses in that game because defense was just horrid on that front. So they're going to need some people to step up and get the job done. Goaltending, you have, in my eyes, one of the best one-two combinations in hockey. You have Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark stepping uh, in between the pipes. This is kind of like the Celtics in a way with the nut-up, shut-up kind of attitude. Get it done. No more excuses. You figure it out. You get that cup done because time's a ticking. You got Bergeron back. You got Krejci back. Will they end up playing uh, past this season? That's to be determined. We also have the new head coach, Jim Montgomery, who I was a big Cassidy fan. Bruce Cassidy is now the coach with the uh, Las, uh, in Las Vegas for, for the, um, what do we call that team? The Golden Knights? Yes, they are. So he stepped in there. I like this new coach. I think he's kind of from the same Cassidy kind of mold. I think he's more approachable. 
more offense defensive minded. And I think they'll get the job done. And I don't think that we'll see a significant issue with the new coach for the team either. So that's where we stand on the Bruins front. Again, Phil, I don't know how much you've seen or heard or witnessed from what you've seen early in the beginnings of the season, but that's what I've seen in my eyes, at least. Well, I, from what I've heard, I haven't seen a lot. Uh, I have heard about uh, kind of uh, how, how crazy and uh, lucky the team is to have such a one-two punch with their goaltending duo. Because, I mean, literally you can throw any one of them in there like on any given night. You can. Yep. Um, but I will say, like, I it's, it's refreshingly surprising because not to say you're – I don't think you're necessarily negative with the Bruins. I think you you add, you add you give more leeway for them. I said maybe yeah, I'll go Red Sox. You could be most negative. I'll do the Nick range. Hmm. Red Sox – uh notice sox, how i haven't talked patriots. about the red sox yet there you I'm go i'm sorry there's, i invoked him i'm sorry there's your him. answer but i think it goes red sox pats um celtics uh or maybe even bruins and, and then celtics because celtics you're like yeah you'll get to them and if you're angry with them you'll talk about them but uh yeah i think uh, it's, bruins... it's a new version of nick now it's a new <laughs> version you know but i think you... I, I think that range has always been there like the uh the sox have always been the most you know you have to be versatile about. you have to yeah. also I've always been a believer and you got to call it as you see it. Yeah. And right now from what I'm seeing and witnessing, I feel confidence with the Celtics. I feel the confidence with the Bruins and everything to feel good about the team and where they're at. And then the others kind of dwindle out <laughs> down as we continue sure. to talk and everything. Uh, um, but no, the bro, just a, a quick wrap up. Uh, yeah. It's refreshing to hear you talk about the Bruins like that, because all I've been hearing preseason and like even the first game or two, it's just like, yeah, you know, they'll be, they'll come out the third in their uh, division. And which isn't bad. They're talking about like seventh or eighth in um, for playoff uh, seating. But you know what? I Who knows? Who knows? You know what I mean? Who knows what will happen? The other thing I wanted to say too. So from last season, when you went into the year, you didn't have as much depth. You didn't have as much resources to your team to help get you to a better spot. I was not happy with them not making a good push to get David Krejci back. And the more I heard and witnessed and talked with others kind of behind the scenes on really what went down on that whole thing is David Krejci did not want to play for Bruce Cassidy. That yeah. is why this change was made. If Cassidy were still the coach here right now, David Krejci would not be here. So why Patrice was that? Bergeron was also hard? would not be back either. Oh, Cassidy right. was a big reason why some of the guys – didn't amp up and want to take it to the next level. It's kind of sad that that's how it comes down to sometimes if you're a professional athlete. Yeah. But I think they got really tired of hearing his voice and getting frustrated and being so open about player struggles or players not doing what they're supposed to do to win. If you remember some of his post-game conferences that he would have with the media, he <laughs> shot from the hip kind of in a way like a Donald Trump-esque kind of way. Oh, sure, just let people know. And that sometimes doesn't translate well to getting a person fired up to succeed. So I think this new voice that's come in for the Bruins is refreshing to some of these guys. And that's why some of these guys that were on the bubble are not really producing as much. I think we're going to see Montgomery get more out of this team than Cassidy was, especially the last few seasons. So well, I think that's, you bring up a good point too, with coaching. Sometimes a lot of players will react to someone more, a little more positively, positively react to people or coaches that have their back. Yep. And it seemed like Cassidy, it was more like you say, shoot from the hip straight shooter, but also like, kind of like he's got to protect his job. Sure. But I mean, part of that of his job is protecting his players. I and mean, I know like fans sometimes we like hearing that sort of like, oh, you know, this player needs to do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's fine. But if it doesn't, if you're going to, if it's not really going to help the player and you're putting that player more of in a, in, you know, in a pit, what does that do? And I, I will say this is one of the reasons why Alex Cora has been so successful with the Red Sox because of his likability in the clubhouse. His, he's approachable. He gets it. He's friends and everything with the team. I think that's, one of the reasons that makes a winning culture. And I think the culture of the Bruins suffered in the past year and a half or so because they didn't have 
somebody that could lead this team to the right place. So that's my stance there on the Bruins from everything. Um, I do want to transition next into our New England Patriots because I don't know about you, but I heard there's some fever going on around this area. It's called yeah, the is. Zappy Fever. So oh, let's talk oh, about no, that. I, I thought you were talking about rubella. I actually have a, I've been oh, stricken you, with oh, another. Do. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, well, it was a form of Zappy Fever, but it, was, it caused diarrhea and, oh, boy. and vomiting. Well, it's all being a fan. That's what it's all oh, about. I was, I was looking forward to my lunch, but I guess I'll hold for a little bit. I'm going to be teasing here. So Mac Jones goes down. This was against Green Bay. Was that Green Bay game week three? Uh, you know, I think it was. I think it was week three because I think they were one and one because they lost. The uh, opener against the Miami. Opener. It's Miami. And then the second game, they end up just getting by skin of their teeth. And then we go to Green Bay where mm-hmm. Mac Jones gets the high ankle sprain of his, uh, I think it's his left leg. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. No, the third game was Baltimore. And that's where it's it the gets. fourth game. I'm yeah. Fourth. It was the fourth game. Yeah. So no, we no, wanted two think, out to Baltimore. No, I think uh, I think Baltimore is where he got hurt because they were in that game for a while. So no, 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 no. He definitely got hurt in Green Bay because that's when Zappy got inserted. No, no, game. no. Brian Hoyer started that game. Oh, Brian Hoyer. That's got right. Okay. Hurt. That's right. I'm fine. Yeah. Zappy no, got right. third confusing. string. You're right. People got You're right. Hurt. So he was he was hurt against the uh, the Ravens. You yeah. started Brian Hoyer against Green Bay, and then he goes out with the concussion. So he's mentally a mess right now. Hopefully he's doing a better. But insert Bailey Zappi, our draftee from this 2022 season, into the lineup for the Patriots, next man up mentality. What an infectious winning different kind of vibe that you get from a player that Really didn't know much about. Now we have a controversy here in New England. I'm just saying what they're saying out there in the media. They're saying it's a controversy. I'm not saying it's a controversy, but it's at least put a little bit, I'm hoping for a little bit of heat on Mac Jones. Mac Jones, if he steps back in, got something to prove now because he did not start off this season well folks he already got five interceptions on the air yeah you can probably blame nelson aguilar and a couple other players for those but still it's a numbers game and when you look at the numbers and you look at everything from a microscope bailey zappi has been the better productive quarterback for the patriots this season yes it's a small sample size yes it was the lions yes it was the uh, the Browns. Yes, we're going to be playing the Bears next week. Uh, next week for Monday Night Football, it should be another win. But that's it's a results business. As a result, you put Bailey Zappi in; he's winning. He's not just winning; he's looking good in the pocket. He's connecting with his receivers, connecting with his tight ends, folks. Something that Mac Jones has not shown that he can do. And we're in a situation here where the Patriots could very well be over 500 after Monday night football when they play the bears. Yeah. Uh, listen, you hit on it. Zappy seems to move a little better in the pocket, have a better feel for how the game flows. And I guess, you know, you can make an argument that Zappy throws a little bit of a better ball. Who knows? Like Mac Jones, listen, also it will let me just, you know, just get it out there. This is exciting. Yes. This is like, you know what I mean? This is like, oh, there's a quarterback controversy or con- maybe not controversy, but there's a con- there's competition. They, like you said, there's a fire under Mac Jones. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, this is great. If And the, if Zappy wins a couple games, then it's like, okay, who do you put in? Who do you, what do you do? What's going on? Do you write that hot hand? And we all know we've been here before, guys and gals. What happens? You write them out. You write out. And if Zappy's winning, keep them in there. The crazy part here on all of this is people are already saying this is a Drew Bledsoe, Tom Brady style controversy. Like, knock it off, folks. Uh, Knock it off. We know that sometimes it's dull out there and you need to really spice it up to really add some sort of level of extra to it. But can we please put the brakes on here? Please. It's not the same. It's not the same in the least bit. So... 
I am hopeful that Zappi continues to do well and the Patriots continue to win and get some sort of a fire lit under Mac as, as politely as I can put it. So, yeah, I also am very (laughs) pleased with what we've seen from the defense. And that's something that I think needs to also be talked about. Uh, Matt Judon has been tremendous with what we've seen from his production on the defensive front. And we also have not the singer, Jack Jones from way back in the day, who's also famous, but Jack Jones stepping in at the cornerback position and being an absolute lethal anchor on that position has been awesome to see. Yeah. uh, Listen, I've Jones has been crazy. He's a rookie and it's kind of, he's been playing like uh, a kind of a vet. And he, how many picks does he have? It was like two or three picks. I think it's two. I think he's up to two as of right now. Yeah. I mean, and he had a great pick six against uh, Green Bay. I yep. mean, you might say it was kind of a lackluster pass, but he was there. No, he jumped the route. He right. jumped around. He noticed it. And he's like, all right, here we go. I mean, he's made some great plays. And you know what? Uh, Dietrich Wise, I mean, especially last week, too, made, is really crushing the pocket. And listen, you, I've heard this, and I, I don't necessarily think it's incorrect. It's not the only thing, but I think, you know, the Pats went back. When Zappi came in, they went more conservative offensively do a little more running, uh, a little more uh, running and kind of not really throwing it, uh, pushing it down the field vis-a-vis like, uh, you know, just taking a shot at the end zone. But then that opens things up a little bit. That slows the game down and it, it allows your defense also to kind of like rest on the sideline, be able to kind of get out there. And listen, I, I think that's, it's going to be a war of attrition. I think that's the best way the Pats are going to win a lot of these. Cause I don't think they can necessarily win shootouts, but no. you know what? If they're going to try to get anywhere, they're going to have to at one point against Buffalo. You can try the war of attrition stuff. You're not going to have like 70 mile per hour wins at, at another game. I don't think so. You're going to have to try something. I mean, that's going to be weird because it's going to be interesting. It, it's okay. going to hopefully we don't get murdered, but hopefully not. No, but I, I think it opened things up like, and look at, think about this, the jets, are you know are in a good spot the jets the new york jets i don't know about you but just from watching around the rest of the nfl there's really not a stud team that's really like wow we can't or or somebody there's what i mean by that there's a lot of open ends to get to the playoffs i'm actually going to change my mind on that i think buffalo and kansas city still are your two top tier probably your top yeah but everybody else i mean flip a coin right now on how it's been I mean, that, I think that's a good transition into even looking at how Tom Brady and the Bucks are doing because that's a disaster right now. Would you call it a disaster? I would call it a disaster right. right now. You have a unmotivated – you have a 2019-2020 Tom Brady right now in the Bucks. That's how mm. I'm going to put it right now. Ooh, you hard. don't have a good situation right there, and I honestly think that – this team isn't going to get to the promised land and where it's supposed to be. Tom Brady is a walking mess right now between his family life, going back on his word, unretiring, trying to prove a point that he's going to play till he's 45. I don't put the blame solely on Tom Brady, but I think what's happened here is the players and the culture around Tom with seeing him get any kind of day off he wants, with not putting in the extra effort like he's done in past years to prepare and get ready. I mean, look at this past week. He was at Robert Kraft's celebration the, the, wedding. The wedding, yeah. And Bill Belichick's not there, and other players from the Patriots aren't there because they have a mission. It's football to get us a championship. Brady goes, team's a mess against the Steelers. They can't even yeah. pull off a win against them. Brady yelling at his offensive line. I mean, that's not a good look. We've no. seen how many different things with Brady this year. How many tablets has he broken? How many people has he yelled at in the huddle? Mm. Who? It's, yes, you're the greatest. I get it. But Tom Brady is a changed person right now. A very changed person. Not the humble, easygoing kind of guy he was here with the Patriots. And I think he's an unfiltered kind of going through a midlife crisis in a way kind of play around the football field well yeah i mean that also is very optimistic it means he'll live to his 80 something 
but uh, which he probably will probably live to 150, but probably still playing till he's 100. Yeah, ex exactly. Uh, Robo Tom Brady, but yeah, no, I, I think he's in a, a really bad spot in his life, possibly. Yep. And this might be not his priority like it used to be. Yep. And I think he's proven enough. What else do you, you don't need? Any, Tom, it's okay. You can call it quits. You can call it quits officially. It's okay. I, I would be curious to hear your thoughts on this. But with how things are going, say the Bucks don't get another win or whatnot this week and things just are a disaster. Early exit for Tom? Uh, Back to retirement? That's a really good question. I, I would say no first, but, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Who the hell knows? Stirring the I'm, pot. Stirring yeah. it up. Is Gronkowski still playing, or is he, like, hurt? No, he's and, out. Oh, he's, he's out, out. yeah. He's out. So, but I mean, you know how Tom is going to get his way. I'm sure that there's something going on between Gronk and even could be Edelman. Oh, yeah, I heard The question Edelman, here with yeah. the Edelman thing is, that are the Patriots as they stupid have, as they were with yeah. re, with allowing the, the Bucks to take Edelman because they, like they did with Gronk? Contract, Would that happen? Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And who knows? I don't. And would Edelman want to get back to that? Honestly, I mean, could you think he could do it? I think he I might mean, want he, to. I think there's a lot of smoke and fire with that. Yeah. I think he was trying to get himself relevant again as he's trying to transition into his life of. I think he's podcasting and doing some oh, sort of yes, thing he is. right now with stuff he to actually, kind of get the yeah. attention on him again. I think that was more driven by that as this continues, kind of like a soap opera to be determined. No, I, I don't I think see you're Edelman right. coming back. I just don't. Not well, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he's physically. I don't think he physically has can do it as much anymore. I mean, he. I mean, Tom Brady's Tom Brady, but he also wasn't didn't get hit all the time. Right. But you know, like he wasn't a um, month But Julian Edelman, Edelman actually has. He did, and he's actually he in a good, uh, yep. funny podcast with uh, one of my favorite comedians, Sam Morell. So, I would recommend checking it out. Oh, and wow. as an unsolicited that. plug. List. That's right. Anything else for the NFL? I know we have the Cowboys too. They're out with uh, Dak Prescott. They have um, one of their rookies again stepping in. And yeah. I think the Cowboys are five and one right now. The Cowboys are are up there. What was it? I was looking at like the Eagles are six and zero, oh, and I'm the like, Eagles are six and zero. Oh the too. Eagles are crazy. Like that whole like the Giants are playing well. The Eagles are playing Jaylen, well. Jalen, what's his name? Quarterback. Is it oh, Mill? For... no, J he's no Jalen Mills with us. Yeah. Um. No, but it just the NFL is crazy. Like the NFL is kind of crazy. We, you thought we all thought that um, <laughs> that uh, Russell uh, Wilson, Russell Wilson going with, to uh, Denver would be something and would be something crazy. But it's you know it hasn't. What a disaster that is out there, huh? I mean, they're two and four now. Uh, they haven't won on the road. Yep. But I mean, who knows? They could turn it around. I mean, it's not a bad like the Chiefs are four to like. Like you said, I, I think you're right. I think the Chiefs and the Bills are, are that team. Jalen Hurts continue. is the name for the quarterback. Jalen Hurts? Philly. That's what it was. Oh, for Philly, yeah. yeah and uh, Philly. and what's his name? Daniel – is it Daniel Johnson or Warren for uh, the Giants? He's pretty – he's like a serviceable guy. He's not like Serv a yep. flashy guy. Because yep. they have, you know, uh, Barkley. Yep. And – but you know, they're – like, that's a powerhouse. Uh, both the AFC East and the NFC East are pretty – are pretty good. Like yep. right now, and um, with the exceptions of the Washington Commanders and the NFC East, but uh, yeah, you, I don't know, man. It's the league is wide open in a lot of ways. It is I right think, now. I think it goes through. I still think it goes through the Bills and uh, Kansas City, it's but beyond Casey. that, but beyond that, flip a coin. Yeah, like I said, flip a coin and see where happens from that. And I think the Pats can compete. I think they can compete with anyone. Yep. Uh, I. At least for three quarters with the Bills in Kansas City. Who knows what happens if they get blown out? Right. As we go. But I all and that's all I want as a fan. I, I just want a competitive game. I think Zappy gives them that. I think he does too. Yeah. I think he does too. And again, Monday night is the Patriots and Bears. So you don't have to do a subscription to Amazon yet for the anything, which I think is a joke in its own right. We've talked to oh, kind yeah. of about the subscription. We did last before. time. Thursday night football is a travesty right now. Is that on Amazon? Is that what's on Amazon? It's just, it's terrible. The yeah. games have been an absolute abomination. I'm gonna use big words and big vocabulary on that. Well, I honestly I, feel bad for Al Michaels, truthfully. I do with what he's calling. He's still making all of his millions and stuff, but the um the product has been piss poor. 
Well, do you think they'll stop? With no, because they're making mil- they're making, they're making billions money. off yeah, of it, they're, so they're, they don't really making, care what yeah. it is. They really don't. It's they're just printing their own money, man. It's they're printing the money, and it's green, and that's all they really truthfully care about. Not the, hey, the business, which is a shame. I do want to move into the baseball postseason because it's it's been interesting. Obviously, it's difficult if you're a Red Sox fan to watch because they're not there. But that's what you get for having such a terrible season. I'm really going to lay it out on them, Phil. I really deserve it. Oh, give it. it. I mean, um, hey, this is – you get no sympathy. You have the me. first rounds now done. Sadly, the Yankees are advancing against the Astros. Oh, I was hoping that Cleveland – Cleveland, I was <laughs> hoping for, too. They had a lot of controversy. They should have started their ace yesterday, and yeah. they didn't. Why they didn't, I don't know. So Shane did they, Bieber did not get the start, and it was downhill after the first inning. So yeah. why that happened, I don't know. I was believing in the Indians and Terry Francona. So the Yankees advanced, the Astros advanced, the Astros swept the Mariners, which I felt was going to happen anyways in the oh, National League. I really the Rays, who the were the champions yeah. from last year, the Phillies uh, walloped them. So the Phillies advanced. The Dodgers are now done. The Padres overtook the Dodgers. So right now your NLCS is the Padres and Phillies. Phillies have a 1-0 lead on the series. And the Astros and the Yankees will be starting very shortly this week. I guess I have to be an Astro fan. <laughs> and honestly, I like Philly. I like Philly or the Padres. I, I yeah, think I want the Padres just because of Obviously, Don Arcillo is there. I know he's not announcing. Oh, the yeah, that's and all, right. But, but yeah, there's there's, there's part of me that says I want to root for the Padres. And then for the Phillies, you got Dave Dombrowski, our former GM, which I wish was still here. Kyle Schwarber, player over there. Oh, yeah. Bryce Harper is having a tremendous postseason for the Phillies. So that's where things look on that front. I do want to talk about the off season here a little bit for the Red Sox because they have a lot of things they got to do. First and foremost, this is it for Heim Bloom. This is it. If you do not deliver this upcoming season, you are done. You are done, buddy. You have not done much of really anything outside of Garrett Whitlock. I'll give him from bringing in and signing him. I can't really say much else. I really can't. Maybe Michael Walker, if he's even back for next season. I never, ever, ever liked the Trevor Story signing. I remember when we talked about that, Phil, when that signing, that was a reek of desperation. That was a reek of relevancy for the offseason last year. I do not like that move. I still do not like it today. It is not going to be a good move over the next five seasons that you still have them. That is a player who has played in Colorado, not in the pressure. He's injury prone. That's what you're going to get. It's like J.D. Drew all over again. Well, that is that is Trevor's story for you folks. And hopefully you get a grand great slam glove, great person in the clubhouse and everything. Hits when he's healthy-ish. But that's J.D. Drew. Welcome back, J.D. Drew. That's what that move was. So, well, it's also – you could also make the argument that was a move for them ensuring that they'll have someone uh, when they don't sign Xander Bogart. Oh, so you another... you think that he's out of here? Is that your – I hope approach? not. I honestly – Okay. I want them to keep – like, what's the point of getting rid of these guys? Like, Xander Bogart, you could say – you can make an argument that, sure, you don't want to keep – what is he, 29 or 28? Thir- or 20? 30. Oh, 30? 30? Yeah. You make the argument they don't want to keep anyone, you know – uh oh 30 and over but you know what he's been with the organization for i mean since he was like was it 19 or something or younger actually when he was oh, signed really? out in aruba when he was 16 oh, wow. years old yeah oh he's my been god there. kind so, of the same like devers devers yeah been with the team since he was a 16 year old kid. and devers and, is 26 or is he even younger 26 yeah 20 25 26 something so like i that. mean like i yeah that's your core that's part of your core and Martinez is gone, right? Essentially, or no? Well, I mean, they could give him the qualifying offer. I think the yeah. qualifying offer now is just a little bit under eighteen mil. And what yeah. that means, folks, is if you it's not horrible. If you offer that option to a player, they have a choice of either testing free agency or 
signing that one year deal to stick with the team after the season, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> after the season that JD, uh, not JD. Uh, yeah. JD Martinez. I was thinking JD drew uh, JD Martinez put together. He's not going to get the big bucks. He was a broken down, fragile man. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I want JD back. And as much oh, as I right. liked him, I just don't think it's worth the, all that money from everything. Here's another theory that I want to test on some of you folks out there too. So you have the 2018 championship team. You know, you had Devers and Bogarts and JD Martinez and all a part of that group where they won the world series and all. You also have gone through 2019, not as solid. You know, you got a pretty decent run. 2020, that was a terrible season. Last year, you got lucky in my eyes with getting to the championship series against the Astros. And then you have the um, this unknown from 2022. Where's things going to be? And it was a disaster from stuff. Do you continue to have Bogarts and Devers as your anchors in your lineup when you've seen a really good sample size? So this would be the con. Yes, they've won before. Now they're getting older. They've also been a part of all this losing and everything too. Do you bank on those guys again and re-sign or do you go clean slate, fresh, bring in some different kind of people to this team? That's that's kind of your pros and your cons. The more I look at my pros, I am pro bringing Bogarts back, I am pro having Devers as a part of my team too. So yeah, do you, and I, let me throw this question quickly at you. Do you think Devers and, and Bogarts were the reason uh, or one of the reasons why they didn't succeed this season? Or do you think? Yes and no. I oh, think okay. part of the reason why it wasn't as great and you saw some struggles with them a little bit, they were not your biggest issues on this team though. The assembly no, I, I agree. I don't think together so by yeah. Bloom having a pitching rotation that was pretty much injury prone, having no bullpen. My biggest issue with this team was going into the season without a closer. Yeah, I was just about to you say there was no real closer blew this season. Twenty eight saves this season, twenty eight, and you that's, never put a closer in play. That's crazy. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. That is my biggest issue with this group. You also had to test your depth quite a bit with the Woo Sox and their pitching outside of maybe Brian Bayo, who's decent, has something to prove still. It was terrible, terrible. Your pitching is what wins championships. And the pitching was disgusting. They couldn't produce. They are, they were over their heads. They were desperate. They didn't have enough depth on that front. That is solely on Bloom's head right there. Believing in what you did. That was that was that was unacceptable. So that's why this is this is make or break time for him. If he goes into the season without a closer, if he goes into the season without some sort of anchor to your staff for your pitch for your starting pitching, this team, you can pack your suitcases and just automatically go home because it's not going to happen without those two key components to getting a championship team back. Now, again, you're going to have to spend some money this off season. You're going to have to, you need to put Bogarts as priority. Number one, if they don't do that, that is a, the, one of the biggest FU statements to the fan base for a player who has been nothing short of a breath of fresh air who should have the captain on his jersey if he does get this new contract from the team. He deserves to be the captain and the leader of the team, 100%. I also think what you're going to see is the Red Sox are going to go with the same approach they did to Bogarts this season with Devers for next season. And they're going to say, fine, you want this contract? Prove it. And do another year again, just like they did for Bogarts. And that hangs over their head and it either makes or breaks their season. I give Bogarts a lot of credit for having a very good producing season. I mean, he was very close to the batting title. He had one of his better defensive seasons 
for for uh, for his career that he's put up. I believe in a player like that. So I am hearing rumblings that Bogarts will be back, but I'm one of those people that you got to prove it. I I don't want to hear this. I want to see action to it. Make it happen. So we have about a week to go, week and a half until you can uh, start signing some players and everything to their uh, contracts and everything, the ones that are under control for the team. And then uh, we'll see. We'll see how things go. But that's my stance on the Bogarts front and how the team will look in general. Yep. Pick up a closer and <laughs> bring in some fresh blood and pitching staff. Yeah. Yep. Signed, signed Devers with Bogarts. Like, yep. what are you, what are you doing? What's your core? Who is your yep. core? Yep. So that's, that's important. That's, that's where, that's where we're at with how the team's going to be looking and everything from the off season and all. It's going to be one of the biggest prove it off seasons that the team has had in franchise history. The Red Sox have been notorious from going from last place to first place quite a bit and being successful with being a champion. Go back to 2012, go back to 2017 and 16 and everything, and you got your championship there. You need to prove it. So that's that's my hope. That's my overall thoughts on where the team is going to be heading towards. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and optimistic. I'm going to be optimistic on a lot of fronts right now. So. Let's uh let's hope for the best. Back to you, Phil. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, thanks. Um, the last uh, thing, the last the thing that I wanted to wrap up here with is one of the new things that I've implemented into our our podcast and some of our and our some of our TV shows. We have a segment before we wrap up. We call it the dumpster dive into certain things that are happening in our wide world of sports in our lovely Boston sports teams. I'm going to tell you how we play it. So as a reminder on how the segment works, we dive directly into the troubles and issues certain players of our local sports teams are having. Could be from a player perspective, could be a management perspective, whatever you'd like. The segment looks for good value players that are worth discussing and pulling out of the trash and saving. And then we also look at the bad players where we just say, you know what, you're done. Throw you out to the pasture. We've, we're done with you. We have no desire to continue doing anything with that player um, and send them basically to the trash pile. So I want to look at the New England Patriots first on this dumpster dive segment. And out of everything that we've seen to start this season so far, are there any players that surprised you at the beginning of this year that you would save from a dumpster fire on your on your pecking order? Yeah, Jack Jones, we, t- our, uh, we talked about earlier. It's one guy who I'm like, listen, I mean, as a rookie, he doesn't play like a rookie. And yep. he's made some great plays. Him and uh, Jacoby Myers is someone I always yep. want to hold on to because he's one of, he's like a Troy Brown-esque type of character. Yeah, uh, And just, he it seems like any, anything you throw his way, he'll, he'll catch or he'll make a damn good um, attempt at catching it. So I'm going to echo the same player. That was exactly who was on my mind. We're reading minds today. Jack Jones is my in my save pile. There's no question about it with everything that he's meant to uh, the team. Spark plug, getting the job done. Again, it's a results kind of business. So that's that's where I'm at for the Patriots on my save pile. Now, are there anybody in the Patriots team right now that you're just like, eh, I'm done with you. You need to go find another home because you reek. You have the flies and everything kind of going around you because you, you you're really you're really reeking up the joint. Uh, man, you know what? I'm trying. Oh, maybe I mean maybe Aguilar, but okay. um, that was uh, something honest, I was thinking of. But honestly, uh, like either someone on the offensive line or um. I you know what I really have to think about that one because I haven't. Had that on my, I don't know. I want to make sure I actually say the correct name. Okay, go for it. You go on the line 
who is not doing such a wonderful job. And that player by the name is Isaiah Wynn. Oh, Isaiah Wynn. Yeah, Isaiah Wynn. He has yeah. been a disaster for this team and something that absolutely cannot continue. So that is somebody I would go like this, put a nice trash bag. We'll pretend this is a nice trash bag and throw him out to the pasture. Just like that. I'm done on that front from that. So on that segment for Dumpster that Dive, we have our, our true gem, Jack Jones, and our get to the compost pile that is Isaiah Wynn. So that's our that's our uh, dumpster dive segment for our for our Patriots right there. The last thing I want to play with you is a game called Fact or Fiction. You either can agree with this statement or disagree with it. Just got to back it up with whatever your feelings or belief are with it. So we're going to play Zappy Fever again. And kind of like we were talking about from the past. When the end of the season hits with how the Patriots are going to be this year, do you feel that Z- Bailey Zappi will overtake Mac Jones here in New England? Is that a true statement? Do you agree with it? Or do you disagree with it? I mean, I don't know. I need more data. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> you like cannot that. have an I don't know answer. You must agree or disagree. Well, here, here we go. Uh, you know what? I, I, From a fun standpoint, I would like to say – Agree. I mean, honestly, I haven't given Mac Jones as as much. He's only it's only been a year in a couple of games, but I kind of want to see. Um, I think that Zappy would be, might that would have be really something, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be nuts. But also, like, it's exciting in a way where it's just like it seems like they're. I mean, Jones doesn't isn't a necessarily a bad quarterback. Yeah, but it just seems like we're we're you know we're coming off the high of having Brady for twenty seasons. And, you know, it's one of those deals where I we want someone who's, you know, Brady light would be fine. I mean, and Brady wasn't necessarily flashy. Everyone forgets he wasn't necessarily a flashy quarterback for his first, like, uh, 10 years or even a little, uh, right. maybe a little less. But he was winning. He was winning. You win. Cause yeah. for the, again, results, as we have talked about. Yeah. Bledsoe was doing great. He just got hurt at one of the very worst times. Let's How can you take a winner out numbers, out yeah. who's getting the job done? So this is why, in a way, I'm actually going to say I'm going to agree with this statement. I think we're going to continue to see Zappy getting the wins. And you're going to have you are going to end up having a little bit of an issue here between picking who you're going to have as your as your quarterback. I really like what I see with this spark, this energy, this prove it kind of mentality that Zappy's doing. I love the connection he's got with his receivers and his tight ends. Again, it's a small sample size, but the right now factor, I'm not saying I'm not a Mac Jones fan because I am. I think Mac Jones has a good potential to get to being a, a stud in the league. But right now with Zappy, you're seeing connections that we're not having with Mac Jones to start this season. Back when Mac was healthy, you saw a frustrated quarterback that didn't want to trust Patricia and Joe Judge with the offensive calls. There was a lot of back behind the scenes turmoil going on with a lot of negativity from Mac. And that's again, a lot of talking heads saying these things going on. Zappy was more of a whatever whatever it takes to get the team to the next level. Put me in. I'm going to find a way to win. I I can't discount that. I can't. So that's why on this fact or fiction part, I think it's a proven fact here that as the season continues, you heard it here. I'm a zappy guy. I mean, yeah, I think, listen. Snappy zappy your, right there if you want to One of your earlier points, uh, Drew Bledsoe was a fine quarterback, but he just didn't know how to move in the pocket. Yep, and he always would pad his ball. And he would just wait. He just didn't know how to throw things away. Uh, yeah, I think. Listen, let's go. Yeah, I didn't even think about the whole like uh, Patricia you know, Judge or Judge thing. Yep, it's another thing. Zappy's more of a company guy, which you know can work yep. for you and against you. But we'll see. He's got he's got that prove it mentality to him. Not that Mac Jones has 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 Mac still has to understand that he has to prove something, and I think that from last season inheriting the job and they got rid of cam newton and everything little bit of comfort right there this feeling of being uncomfortable for mac is going to be something that he's not 
thrilled about. And I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get that opportunity to get back in. I think he will get the opportunity, but I don't think the opportunity is going to be super pleasant with Mac. I think it's going to be a very quick, if you're throwing more picks and we're not winning, they'll insert Zappi. Because now they know they got a guy that can get it done. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that'll definitely so. factor in. I think like he's going to have competition and that's competition is a good thing in this sort of situation. So fingers will be crossed on the best for the Patriots. Phil, we did a jammed packed edition today of face the facts covered everything. The last thing I did want to mention, I don't know how much you are a college football fan. I'm really not, but you cannot discount Tennessee beating Alabama last weekend. That's a big one. It's a huge one. Yep. I, I'm would, not a fan myself, but I know. I, you know, I could not Alabama sleep at night if we walked away from this program and didn't at least acknowledge that that was quite a victory. I know Alabama is down there, uh, lead quarterback. That's definitely an issue, obviously, for Alabama. And Tennessee, kudos to you for pulling off that victory against one of the powerhouses in the league. So we'll see what happens as their season continues. But again, just we want to mention Tennessee pulling off the victory against Alabama. Got to love the upset. And you got to love having NBA back on TNT. (laughs) NBA (laughs) on TNT. You got to love that too. So that's going to do it here for our episode of Face the Facts. For our TV viewers and our podcast viewers, we hope that you enjoyed. Phil, final words before we go back to hibernation. Thank you again, and we'll see you next month. And, yeah, keep watching all this stuff. And, you know, I, if you are experiencing fatigue, a fever, that's right, uh, shivers, or any sorts of uh, bowel, straight bowel movements, just know it's just there may be a new fever. vaccine by the end of the next show. We, do. we never vaccine. know. It never could know. be the Zappy vaccine. Get, so inoc- we'll say, get inoculated. They will say. All right, Phil, thanks again for joining us here on Face the Facts. Uh, for Nick Face and Phil Healy, we will see you next time on another awesome episode. Stay well, one and all.